Hey guys, so welcome back to the channel. I have another ECM test this time on a Marine ECM MEFI 1. This is a Mercruiser 4.3 uh, sent to me by Motorboat, uh, motorboat uh, Mechanics in North Carolina. Um, the concern they have is uh, on the signal coming from the computer on J223, which I'm going to develop a little more. Uh, on the video so you see exactly the testing and everything that I'm doing. I want to show that I have right now, uh, I opened the computer to do a few tests on the circuit uh, prior to do my normal test with Diacom and run it with a simulator, which is now running perfectly. Um, just to know or to show that this is their computer, this is a cover for their computer, so I'm just going to keep it here. Uh, the computer is testing perfectly. So right now I've been running for maybe five minutes and we have one full code. Uh, that is code 43. And I'm going to show you that is uh, very common in here. Actually, I can do it in here. Forgot it. I'm I'm doing uh, Diacom, uh, sorry, Team Viewer, so I can uh, show that here. So the full code that we have is again code 43, electronic spark control malfunction. So I'm going to lower this down and I'm going to show you what the full 43 refers to. And this is a picture on, of the manual, which I also have open. But as you can see, this is code 43 for, no, uh, for knock sensor circuit. I don't have the knock sensor module connected to the computer and that's why it's default there. But yeah, so this, um, this is a fault that, uh, that I can disregard. This is from uh, Mercruiser Service manual, uh, manual 25, and I'm in page uh, 5i74, that is for the NOx sensor. Uh, when the computer came to me first, I saved the history, which I have right here. So this is with a computer not running, and the full codes that were stored were 42, electronic spark timing malfunction, and the 43. I erased the folds and the only one that came back it was 43. So I'm going to go over to call 42, which I have open as well here. I took a picture so we can immediately visit the page. So as you can see here, we got for MEFI 1, that is a MEFI 1 computer, Y223 is a circuit that will go over to the IC module, which is in charge of the coil. This is the ignition module, right? So uh, this PNN, our signals are coming from the distributor, which has a pickup coil in there that will produce these PNN signals, and that will activate the circuitry inside the module to then control the coil, right? So code 42 refers when the system is running on the ignition module or in crank mode, there is no voltage on CKT424. Okay, CKT424 uh, is J224, so we got A, B, C, D. Uh, that signal we're going to B, and then the J223 is circuit 423, which it goes to the D on the ignition module. But so, following that, it says there is no voltage on CKT424 and the ignition module grounds. CKT423. So this is on cranking mode or when it's running on the ignition module. So this is very important to read for the test on the boat. The ECM expects to detect a low voltage a circuit 423 during this condition. If the ECM detects or sees voltage, it says code 41, which we don't have, and will not go into ignition control IC mode. So let's follow up. When the RPM for the IC is reached about 300 RPMs, the CKT424 voltage apply. Uh, let me see. And voltage, let me just see. When the RPM for IC reach about 400 RPMs and the CKT voltage apply, so there is, uh, there is no voltage. Now it's voltage apply because when it's running on the ignition module or in crank mode, there is no voltage on CK24. When it's 300 RPMs or so, well, about 300 RPMs, there will be voltage applied to the 424 and the 423 should no longer be grounded in the ignition module and the voltage should be varying. So again, whatever 1.2 to whatever 12 volts, right? 
If the CKT is open or grounded, the ignition module will not switch to IC mode. The CKT circuit for 23 voltage will be low and code 42 will be set. So this is very important. This is very key information for the technician on the boat to do the test. So you can use a multimeter. I would rather have um, uh, an oscilloscope waveform preferably uh, preferably uh, picoscope so you can say the ps data and then send it to me but uh yeah this is why is this code set it also said if circuit 423 stays grounded the ic module will switch into ic mode but because the line is grounded there will not be an ic signal and trouble code 42 will be set so again, this is the next step of that, right? So this is the reason because the 423 stays grounded because it's not receiving the signal or the voltage on the circuit 424. So those are coming from the ignition module and not from the computer. There is a variant voltage that will come from the actual computer when that mode of cranking passes that 300 RPM threshold and then voltage is applied on the circuit 20. 20, uh, 424. So as we can see here, that is not the case. I have, this is the same ignition circuit. I got the IAC, uh, IAC in here, and this simulates, that test light simulates the coil, and this is the fuel pump. So the computer is running good. It can, it can injector, the injectors are running perfectly. Uh, let me go over to the actual pits. So I can change the TPS accordingly to the RPM, because right now I'm in like, 896 RPMs. So I'm going to raise the RPMs more. I'm going to go over to, and I want you to see the change on the amplitude of the voltage for the coil. So that is exactly how it should happen on the boat. I'm going to change the throttle position sensor a little bit, uh, and then the map accordingly to an RPM, right? So we can see that the, inject, the injector a millisecond change in the brightness on the coil. So everything is working good and we have only one fault code. So what is this telling me? The computer is good. There is absolutely no issues with the computer. So um, this uh, technician, his name is Matt. So Matt, the problem you have is either on the ignition module or in the harness from the ignition module to the computer itself. I will look into uh, J and we can see the signals that are very important in here. And this is what I want to put this page and I refer to the manual so you can visit that page. We go, I'm going to go to the manual so you know exactly where this is and you can run the test. But yeah, so you will check J223, J28, J224, and J26. These are straight lines from the computer to the ignition module. So make sure that you got no broken pins or wires or something wrong with that. So going into the manual itself, I'm gonna go into fold, fold, uh, fold four to, uh, 42. Let me go to the first page. So this is exactly where we were. And this is an alpha computer. I can go a little up into there or I can open it in here. Let me just find it. That will be right here. So this is the uh, system that this boat will use. And as you see, the shift cutout switch, Bravo requires a jumper plug. So make sure, because if it's an alpha, you will have a shift cutout switch. Make sure that you check that switch because the wire for circuit 423 will go to that switch and then over to the ignition module because it's an alpha it's an alpha uh, motor, right? I think I think I understood from when we talked and you told me that that was an alpha boat. And you see, it says that if it's a Bravo, it will, it will, it will require, sorry, it will re require a jumper plug because it's not an alpha, so it will be no switch. But if you have an alpha, you have to have that switch and you have to check that switch. All right, going into the manual so you can see the page. Again, I'm in page five I. 72 this is for that code 41 is the same description in all the readings and after this if you go over to the next page uh, 73 it tells you what to do right so 
uh, start engine, allow it to me to you know, clear the full code, and then see if it resets again. It tells you to do a GNOME test. I would rather have, um, uh, again, an oscilloscope that you can check the signals and see where you're looking at. But the resistance are good. You can check for the resistance. I will even disconnect the computer, disconnect the ignition module, and then uh, let me go back to the actual image. So what I would do here, is unplug the ignition module and unplug the computer. These are wired, there's nothing in between except for 423 that has that uh, shift uh, switch that you have to have it um, on. Uh, so what I would do is I would put a test light to ground on the one side or to power. So the test light will be attached to power and then connected to the one pin. And then on the other side, I would just touch to ground. So you have the test light connected to power the, the wire through the wire you will be supplying ground if that test light is nice and bright it's telling you you have no problems on the wiring it's a better than ohm test a wire because uh, an ohm test even if you have two three filaments or wires inside that braided wire they have like this right so let me just show you uh, if we have a wire like this on on um on a vehicle, this has 22 strings inside. So even if three or four of those are still attached, it will show uh, kind of a good resistance because you're not load testing the circuit. Again, what a multimeter is putting like three volts to five volts to check the system. A test ground to power and then you supplying ground on the other side will really load the wire. And if it's nice and bright, you know that you are okay. I will even recommend to, you know, wiggle tests. When you have the test light connected to battery positive in here and you put this side to ground, you wiggle the harness and that's also a way for you to find if you have a broken wire. Because yeah, let's say, you know, it's nice and bright, but then you start checking the harness, so, you know, shaking it, wiggling the wire and then boom, and you can see a light flicker you have maybe a, an open wire somewhere, right? So it needs heat and vibration, right? Those are the enemies of any harnesses on vehicles and no more, I mean, more even in, in boats, right? Corrosion. So yes, look for that. Do the test on the four wires. If you have the switch, make sure that you are, uh, you know that the switch is closed, it's not open and test it, right? All right, so those are the tests that you need to have in, in the boat done. All right, so um, tests that I want to always do is let's turn the computer off and make sure that we only have one full code happening. I have done it uh, off the video. As you can see, it's now showing 65 minutes or not even a minute, sorry, 0.65. And we got only one full code, which should be the uh, knock sensor. And that's exactly 41, I mean 43. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the boat off, we're going to lose communication. You will see that in a second, and that is normal. And I'm going to run it again. That's like in the boat, right? So I'm going to go over to 45 RPMs, uh, sorry, Hertz, which is around 900 RPMs in here. And we only had one full code. So yes, uh, this is just to stress even further my uh, test in here so the problem we have is definitely in the boat and not here i have the complete setup as you have it in the boat i'm going to have to reseal this and send it to you i will definitely recommend to uh, do uh, an oscilloscope captures of those circuits and also the test light test that i just told you to do which is super valid if everything shows us no good, please contact me and I will try to guide you through and help you so you can di diagnose this and, and make it work. All right, guys, thank you so much for visiting the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye-bye.